Hey there folks, you know about Bluetooth if you are into smartphones, but have you heard about green tooth? What? Green tooth? <laughs> yeah, you got it right. It's green tooth. It's the latest mind-blowing technology brought to you by Huawei. Well, maybe green tooth doesn't sound too cool to everyone, so they renamed it as Near Link. Near Link was unveiled on August 4th this year. Huawei introduced a new generation of short range wireless connection technology called Near Link. Bluetooth and Wi Fi are representative wireless connection technologies. But at the Huawei's event, the icons for Bluetooth and Wi Fi transformed and merged into the Near Link. It symbolizes the combination of the advantages of traditional wireless technologies like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. If you've used the smart devices, you're probably familiar with those convenience that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi have brought to our lives, right? But hey, humans are always seeking faster space, right? It insistently made Bluetooth and Wi-Fi less appealing. Today, let me share some mind-blowing data with you to help you understand just how outrageous it is. In terms of transmission range, Bluetooth typically covers around 10 meters, while Wi-Fi 6 can reach up to 300 meters. And what about new link? According to Huawei's data, it's double the range of traditional technologies, reaching up to 600 meters. But that's not all. Wow. New Link's transmission rate is no less than 900 Mbps, while the latest Bluetooth offers 50 Mbps. Even Wi-Fi 6 only goes up to 600 Mbps. Amazing, right? But wait, there's more. Let's talk about the latency. Mainstream Bluetooth have a latency of around 15 to 30 milliseconds, while Wi-Fi latency is around 100 milliseconds. Now, take a wild guess about the new link. Ready? Go! Three, two, one. The answer is 20 microseconds. That's hundreds or even thousands of times faster. And it's not just the latency where new link shines. It's also we are hand in terms of connectable devices. It supports up to 4096 devices connected simultaneously and handles data from 80 users within a mile seconds. In comparison, Bluetooth supports only 8 devices and Wi-Fi supports up to 256. Wow, raising such impressive features. We can't wait for it to hit the market. But how did they come up with such a game-changing innovation? And how will it revolutionize our lives? Well, folks, today I want to dive in and explore how this little new link can illuminate our tech-savvy lives together. Let's get started. Here, maybe some of you are curious about how did Huawei make the incredible inventions? Well, I just want to say, human rhythm often doesn't arise spontaneously. It's usually awakened by a desperate situation. In May 2019, Huawei was added to the entity list, and international standard organizations like Bluetooth, which claimed to be open organizations, kicked Huawei out. Subsequently, considering the need for self-controllable technology and the Ministry of Industry and the Information Technology joined force with Huawei to develop the Green Tooth as a counterpart to Bluetooth. In November 2022, the new Link standard was released. It's establishing an end-to-end -end architecture that includes the access layer, service layer, and application layer. Wow, those familiar with Huawei know that it is pretty much the inspiring script they followed. What's more, this year drawn, 300 domestic and abroad companies have participated in New Link Alliance, realizing the complete coverage of the whole scenarios and upstream and downstream of the industry chain such as chips, modulars, devices, solutions, testing, operation, and security services. 
So what are the technological advantages of this new innovation? Here's what tech enthusiasts wouldn't want to miss. Nearlink success layer has two modes, SLE and SLB. SLE is comparable to Bluetooth, while SLB is like Wi-Fi. You can think of it as a fusion of the two. At the Huawei event, the icons for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi transformed into the Neolink icon. It's like having a basketball player who is not only tall but also very fast. SLE, which corresponds to Bluetooth, operates in a 2.4 GHz unlicensed band just like Bluetooth. However, it is more advanced in terms of specific technologies, offering ultra-low latency, lower power consumption, superior performance, and extended coverage compared to Bluetooth. For example, in the keyboard and mouse interaction scenarios, SLE achieves a latency as low as 250 microseconds, while Bluetooth can only manage 7.5 milliseconds. Not only that, Neuralink can support a wireless mouse with a refresh rate of 4K, while a regular Bluetooth mouse only reaches 125 Hz. Achieving this phase is thanks to Neuralink incorporating many technologies similar to 5G as wireless transmission. It utilizes technologies such as uh, OFDM, CP design, time domain, and frequency domain scheduling. It even incorporates 5G's Palo encoding technology, resulting in increased sensitivity and improved anti-interference capabilities. On the other hand, SLB, which operates to Wi-Fi, operates in a 5 uh, GHz band and provides high-speed data transmission. It supports multi-user MIMO technology. It is a significant advantage over the traditional Wi-Fi, which can experience congestion and slower space when multi-Pi devices are connected. Another exciting aspect of Neolink is its application layer, which provides developers with an open platform to create a wide range of applications. Huawei has introduced the Neolink Developer Kit, enabling developers to tap into the potential of this new technology and create innovative applications that leverage its capabilities. This open approach encourages collaborations and development of a vibrant ecosystem around the new link. Now let's talk about the potential impact of the new link on our lives. The reason it's got so much potential is that people believe the technology has the potential to advance the ecosystem. Through the Internet of Things operating system, it can achieve the coupling of software, hardware, and system to meet commercial application requirements. And hey, that's probably one of the main reasons why capital market just crazy on this technology. It aims to provide a more powerful connection for Huawei's Harmony OS Internet of Everything. So in the new link thing and ecosystem, which industries are going to benefit? You may ask about this problem. Firstly, I think that is automobile. With the rapid patronation of autonomous driving and smart cabins, the number of communication nodes and the performance requirement inside vehicles keep on increasing. It can be used in an area like automotive signal transmission, in-car entertainment, information assistance, and onboard security. This move can effectively reduce overall vehicle costs. And the second arrow, I think that must be smart devices. How oh, our beloved smartphones and the co-electronic devices, they need to connect with the wireless handphones, VR glasses, PCs, and anything that you can image. And we all want low power consumption, high-speed internet, low latency, uh, large capacity, and precise sensing. But hey, achieving all these goals using traditional transmission methods like trying to jungle too many boats at once. Take Bluetooth, for example. It can only connect one-on-one -on -one and Wi-Fi requires internet for interconnection. Frustrating, right? But we are lucky. 
New links of our e-technology will send to see today It enables quick connections between smartphones and other smart devices Using a one-to-many approach Plus, polar coding makes screen casting or offline transmission faster More stable and higher quality Oh, and did I mention it also helps improve the battery life of those devices? <laughs> Amazing, right? A third arrow I think that will be definitely intelligent manufacturing. Now let's talk about the world of intelligent manufacturing and industrial control. Some scenarios require real-time interaction, like CNC machine tools, warehouses and production lines, some need high-frequency rapid response, like temperature control and monitoring sensors. And some even demand high precession, such as image transmission, automated production lines, and smart inspection. And the fourth one will be the smart home. Newlink can enhance the connectivity and performance of smart home devices. Image controlling your entire room automation system including lights, appliances, security systems, and more with minimal latency and a seamless user experience that will be perfect the fifth one I can image that will be gaming <laughs> gamers will appreciate new links, low latency and high speed transmission as it can provide a more immersive and uh, responsive gaming experience multiplayer gaming could become even smoother and more enjoyable with the new link technology and the last one I can image will be the VR and AR New Link's low latency and high bandwidth make it perfect for VR and AI applications With it, users can experience seamless and realistic virtual environments without the lack of buffering issues that can detract from the immersion As a music lover, I can also image the wireless audio New Link can revolutionize wireless audio devices such as the headphones and speakers. Users can enjoy high quality audio streaming without interruption, and with the extended range, they can move around their environment without worrying about signal loss. Oh, these are just a few examples, but the possibilities are vast. As developers and innovators explore the potential of Nearlink, we can expect to see a wide range of applications and use cases that leverage its unique features. We can emerge all these diverse requirements within the same interconnected system. We can achieve highly automated intelligent manufacturing. How cool is that? But here's the catch, folks. Right now, Neuralink hasn't fully rolled out. The old devices aren't compatible. It needs to be uh, equipped with uh, Neuralink chips. But don't be too worried. In June 2023, the Neuralink Alliance got approved an international industry and standard organization. It has over 300 domestic and foreign member units, include uh, 13 multinational companies and 43 top tier enterprises. Impressive, right? In my opinion, no one can refuse such good advance. Well, in conclusion, the significance of success of this technology lies not only uh, it being homegrown China, but also its powerful contribution to the interconnection of small equipment and the construction of the basic infrastructures. So, as an investor, which companies are likely to benefit from this new technology? Well, from my perspective, there's three types of companies that can have a good shot at reaping the benefits. The first one is uh, nearly alliance members and important thing vendors. The second one is hardware manufacturers. And third one is other ecosystem adapters. Last, my friend, if you want some more juicy details about Nearlink and investment opportunities about it, please make sure to subscribe my analysis report. I'd like to share more useful information with you. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.